Okay, welcome to the first Porgy Catch and Cook of 2018. The cooking portion will start around six minutes. So for now, we'll just talk about the fishing. It's pretty early in the season. I'm using my Rapala slab wraps. And I'll leave a link to the video on the upper right hand corner of all the equipment you need for this type of fishing. But basically, I'm using the slab wrap as a jig and I'm just kind of lifting it up off the bottom letting it fall back down on slack line and these porgies will sort of bump and slash at it. Um, I replace the treble hooks with a single hook just in the tail and the belly I weight it down with some figure eight clips and I'll leave a link to all that stuff down below. I'm using the Phoenix feather rod the seven foot one light and you see me taking a while to bring this fish in and I am using six pound leader but that's not the reason you'll see in a second why you have to fight these fish sort of gingerly when you're using the number four or number two owner hooks and right there most of these fish are going to be skin hooked just barely skin hooked and you need a light action rod you need the correct drag setting this is the Tatula 1000 LT reel and it has a very unique drag system. Very different from the Shimano Stratic that I'm used to, but more on that later. So that's the first one that I kept and I only kept three that day. Yeah, keeping this one. One more and I'm gonna go fluking. These new... <laughs> oh, good. To your cause, or you no, no, I'm okay. Catch your own. I'll, I'll catch my own. Little loose lips here. That's a nice one. Uh, uh, oh, why'd you gotta do that? I'm you, Ooh. this is what I use. There you go. Glove, glove. They like glove. <laughs> all right i hope you enjoyed that cameo apparently the porgy bite's not so hot in north carolina but yeah i did try fluking for a little bit but it's very spotty in that area there's there's fluke around but it's it's almost not worth spending a lot of time targeting them every season i'll catch a couple nice ones though And here I hooked into what I thought was an 18 plus inch porgy, but yeah, the second time I was surprised by blackfish this year. The last time was catching them on Kitex, but this is probably more remarkable hitting a little crankbait. A nice little fish. I put it back in the net just in case it needed some time, but he was good to go. So I'm finding the porgies in over 25 feet of water that day. And that's another reason why I went down to six pound liter. Normally I would use 10 or maybe even 12, but this bait weighs 3 16th ounce. And even with very little current, you do need some light line just to get it down. So the drag system on these Tatula reels, or I guess all the new Daiwa LT reels, they don't seem to be linear. A lot less line than you would expect is peeling off the reel on these very light drag settings. 
However, I didn't lose any fish. Even the ones that are barely skin hooked like this one and the next one you'll see is just you know, very light pressure, the hook will pop right out. So here you see me bleeding out the porgy, they bleed very nicely. The most important thing is you get these on ice as soon as you're done bleeding out. Porgies are not fish, you drag around your kayak or leave in a bucket in the boat during the summer. It's just, they're quite sensitive to temperature. So definitely bring some kind of cooler or fish bag with you when you're porgy fishing. There's really no point keeping them if you're not going to keep them cold. So here I think was probably the biggest porgy of the day and I know they're going to get bigger as the season progresses. So 17 inches my record in this area anyway. And my friend Zorin had one that was over 18 inches last year. So this Phoenix rod, I, I purchased for porgy fishing and so far so good. Although I'll be making a few updates to my initial review. And you see there how lightly these porgies are being hooked. They're not really eating the bait. They just kind of come up and just just kind of slash at it. And yeah, that's a thick pre-spawn fish. All right, that's the fishing bit, and here comes the cooking portion. All right, so this Caribbean grill of fish, I suppose the only real Caribbean ingredient is, look at that, Jamaican. I think these are scotch bonnets. Thyme, dill, and parsley are the main herbs. And then lemon, lemon juice, a couple of tomatoes, a red onion, spring onion or scallions, and these yellow, orange, scotch bonnet peppers. And we're just going to make a marinade as a sauce or a salsa for the fish. All right, so as opposed to our last dish, which was more highbrow, Everything here is going to be pretty roughly chopped. So these scallions are sliced relatively thin. You don't want too much of the green. Most of the white. The white is where the flavor is. Now the red onion. Pretty small dice. But once you choose a size, dice, you should stick to it. Everything should be roughly this size. And we'll, we'll use these season all. This will be one of like... Many, dozen. many, many. <laughs> many. One of, maybe we'll do like various various ethnic dishes around the world. Alright, this parsley's been washed, just shave off. I love this rustic cut. Just kind of bunch it. And we'll just slice through it a couple of times. Always flat leaf parsley. Curly parsley has no place in real cuisine. That's for like cheese plates and shit. Alright, some dill. And very rough. Now is dill very Caribbean? Right, so there's most of the dry ingredients. And then we'll just juice a couple lemons. Alright, so these peppers, I don't really have experience with these. Get rid of some of the seeds. I mean, they look like an albanero. Oh no, I kind of smell it now. Oh, yeah. They smell nice. Mm -hmm. They smell very, like, fragrant. This might be a mistake, Mark. What if it's, like, crazy hot? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Oh, boy. Very hot. It's very hot? Mm -hmm. Woo! Is it hotter than the red Thai chilies? Try one for yourself. I don't know. I'm not going to do that because I have to taste this. Uh... 
I wouldn't put a lot in it just yeah, to start off. Yeah, let's do it. like a teaspoon. Maybe a little more. Maybe, okay, just one more. All but right, I that's, think that's the the type yeah. of heat. There, there. Okay. Oh my With god. The, no, that's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. And then this one <laughs> will just stuff inside the fish. All right. So You're tasting it today. <laughs> I am not tasting it. I gotta show up to my date now. Like. All right. Little small knob of ginger. But we're just gonna mince and very rustic ginger you do have to mince it out i don't want to eat like a big chunk of ginger a few cloves of garlic a chop a pinch of salt let's break everything down this goes in. Now, so we're gonna add just a dash of soy sauce. And this is, you're not gonna taste it, but it's gonna add a lot of umami. Mm. Likewise, teaspoon of sugar, teaspoon and a half, and then olive oil. Big pinches of salt. Apple cider. Yeah. Yep. And we learned from the crudo that the two different acids, they really play well. That is good. A little more salt. So, the, the apple cider. Yeah, the apple cider really it. just rounds everything yeah. out. If it's just lemon, it's too sharp and yeah. it's not that savory. Yep. Alright, so that is our marinade slash uh, warm sauce. Alright, so these porgy, they've been salted down. So I trimmed all the spines, all the fins, left the eyeballs in because we're not frying it. They're not going to explode. So just a thick layer of kosher salt and then paper towels oil wrap and now we're going to oil these down for the grill this is just grapeseed oil you don't want too much oil you want just enough to coat it but here's the important thing after you coat it with oil another layer of salt so kosher salt and we're going to do one side and salt the other side once it's on the grill And yes, you might think I already pre-salted this fish and now I'm adding more salt. It's not going to be too salty. Whole fish can take it. You know, most of it is going to fall off the grill anyway. All right, and that's it. We're going to go outside. All right. So I waited till the grates are hot. And then I'm just going to oil them. this side down nice to another salt layer that side gotta just let it hang out don't touch it I'm gonna rest this here for a second. This. Sleep done. Not bad. Pretty solid. Now it doesn't matter what happens. We got the first side. The other side can go to complete shit. Bottom of the plate. These porgies, you can just cook them until, you know, almost like a bark forms. And they taste, you know, like a fluke, the window is like 10 seconds. Porgy, you can just let it go. So much fat. While that's finishing up, we're gonna sauce the plate. This has been marinating for 
couple hours. You know, once you lay the hot fish on top, it's just gonna soak up on this sauce. Beautiful marinade. It's good. It's, it's uh, rustic, you know? Let's see how we're gonna orient this. Okay, lay it on the sauce. Okay. Just kind of press it into the sauce. Now, while it's hot, spoon this over. Oh yeah. Looks great. See, it wouldn't make sense if you, you know, do like a fine brunoise and everything. Just leave it chunky, like a salsa. Perfect. Look at that. This, this heat is worth it. Mm -hmm. Outdoors. Look at that sunset. Look at that. Uh, hmm. That's a sauce. It looks Caribbean. <laughs> That's a colorful, you know, that crudo I felt was a little elitist. Mm -hmm. But this is the kind of dish people want to make. Look at that. Hang on. How's the salt level? It's good. I think it could it could, it could use another day of aging. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, you know, mm -hmm. you, you could salt these fish down and hold it for a day. Mm -hmm. You just gotta soak up all that moisture. Yep. This stuff. I think I'm gonna. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're making me hungry. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there you go. Caribbean grilled porgy. All right, thanks to my cousin Mark for filming on a very hot day. It was absolutely brutal. And yeah, it was a fun dish to make. I'll be doing more of these international dishes sort of outside my comfort zone. So stay tuned for the next Catch and Cook and thanks for watching.